I'm a hustler, Chessy. I just want you to know it ain't where I've been, but where I'm about to go up the rocks. Today we're going to talk about the Hustler. This is a classic RC crawler that I have quite a few of at this point, and I think I'm going to build it into something new. So let's take a look. Let's see. <laughs> so here's kind of a, a half finished project, I suppose. This is a Hustler chassis, a brand new in package here. And I actually have my original Hustler chassis that I, it's been sitting on a shelf. I took it apart you know, it was just one of those things like it's not a competition crawler these days. It used to be in what, 2007, maybe 2006. I'd have to go look up on the old forums on RC Crawler to see exactly. But I always suspected that this one was made by hand here in the US and that all the rest of them that I got were Chinese. And I actually, taking things apart, got this confirmation. Not only does it have the Carnage Crew logo lasered into the bottom, which is definitely not gonna pick up on camera, but I'll try here and you can maybe see, I can barely see. There's their logo and it says Carnage Crew on there. And uh, yeah, so there's that which told me, mm, you know, this is probably handmade here in the States by Aaron, who was the welder in the Carnage Crew. I threw this one on the scale. This one was 0.75 pounds and this one was 1.1 and some change. So this one made with solid stock everywhere and this one is actually made with hollow tube, something which is a lot harder to weld. So you, you send this off to essentially a Chinese factory, if I remember correctly, and they're not gonna want to be doing this like TIG welding of very thin, small tubing. So it's just all solid and it actually is also threaded on these, whereas this one was just through holes on there. So. The original one is going up on the shelf. It was black oxide coated where I have touched it. It has a patina everywhere. It's uh, just something that I don't know. I just don't want to beat it up anymore, honestly. And I have two more of them anyway. So we've got this new in package and then I actually bought this other one, which is essentially new in package. Doesn't, well, there's a couple of scratches on it, but uh, this one is essentially what the old supers would look like. I'll get this out of the way here. And this is built on X factor axles. As you can see, it's MOA motor on axle on both sides, just like the old crawl, uh, crawl, <laughs> just like the old clod buster axles here. Uh, but these were supposedly a lot stouter, but you, you break the, the shafts on them all the time. Like I, I don't, I forget exactly why they sucked, but I do know that they, they didn't stick around uh, is really what matters about it. But this is the size and the heft of the old super class crawlers. And uh, honestly, this one wasn't built right because the Hustler chassis was built for all compression and then it's, it's like a droop setup. So it should be down like this. And then when you go over something, it would like, you know, droop out. But this one's set up in compression. So like the, the roll center, the roll center is not too bad. You can see that they space things out. I'm getting off into the weeds here about it. But at any rate, you can see this is this is what the Hustler chassis used to be made for. So there you go. It's all super class crawlers. There we go. So what's my plan with this guy? It's really just going to be a cool rig. When it boils down to it, that is all that I'm building is just it's not going to be for competition. It's not going to be very capable for that matter uh, to tell you the truth but i thought that it would just kind of look cool so i have here some voodoo u4 tires and they are mounted on some uh, crawler innovation rims i think these are the one inch wides if i remember correctly i'd have to measure it's been a been a while here and i tucked them as much as i could i'm using some vanquish 2.2 or a uh, 0.225 width rims and it, it's not quite as narrow is what I would like to see. But when you're talking motor on axle, there's really not a lot of options for axles. And besides that, these bolt in because it is, it's what it was originally designed for. So these axles bolt right up. And with these Vanquish 80 millimeter scale shocks, it actually perfectly bottoms out on the shocks and just barely or doesn't touch during articulation. So I couldn't ask for this to be a, 
a better build to tell you the truth as far as the ease of it now i do need to get another set of these whatever they're called trailing arms i have some vanquish trailing arms for another rig and it turns out that they didn't quite fit they're around here somewhere let's see yeah so these were like yeti trailing arms or something like that and i was hoping that i could use these in the rear because they were a little bit longer and then i'd use these in the front or whichever way would bolt up with the most clearance and it turns out because of the way that they're square when they're bolted up to the axle they actually don't rotate they it it wasn't working there just wasn't enough clearance so i had to use these style of trailing arms which i need another pair of now with normal rod ends so there's a lot more clearance there and it is not limiting our travel like these were so uh, i'll see i may be able to, well i really don't want to take a dremel to them but i could take a dremel to these and clearance them out but they're really only made in the yeti where there's up and down and there really wasn't much side to side so it's not exactly what the application needs or was for that part so that's uh where i'm at right now we're gonna have to make sure that this doesn't hit on the front and the motor doesn't hit we've got this crossbar that's in the way so i'm essentially gonna mimic what i did in the rear on the front and i'm actually gonna switch the axles because these are the axles that i built up they have uh you know like the fancy stuff we need more steering radius on the front than we do on the rear and this is going to be a four-wheel steering vehicle as well because i mean i can i mean <laughs> look at all that steering on these clodbuster knuckles they're terrible the clodbuster was it was never good it's not gonna have much clearance like i said this isn't a performance rig it's just kind of be it's gonna be something fun and it's gonna look cool that's that's really it it's just gonna look cool so it's gonna sit about like yay short wheelbase it's uh i guess i could do some measurements and stuff but let's see what is the wheelbase going to be i don't think this is long enough this is definitely not long enough i'm not even going to tell you what the wheelbase will be because i don't know i don't know but just kind of a fun project parts that have been laying around i've got plenty of these shocks um so I, I don't know what happened, but these are all the sets of 80 millimeter shocks that I have from Vanquish right now. I have even more 90 millimeters and uh, I, yeah, so I need to start building up my projects. I need to start using up shocks and one of these pairs will go towards this project. So yeah, there we go. All right. I don't even know what to call it except for another hustler, I suppose. So I'm going to work on this slowly. Need to buy a couple more parts, maybe another set of trailing arms because there isn't a good place to bolt the shocks up to on the axle, especially when you have servos on it. As you can see, the servo sits on the axle and that kind of gets in the way of any other place that I could bolt that in. Originally, what we would do is have like some collars on the uh, links themselves and then we would have like essentially retention clips or something like that and we would just bolt to the to the retention clips which it worked but it didn't work great to tell you the truth so i think this is going to be a better way to go with these trailing arms so i need to hop on oh man like maybe ebay or something i bought that set of trailing arms uh, somewhere between four and ten years ago uh, and i think they were for the wraith or something which would work terribly in the wraith but um you know, companies make aftermarket parts that don't work well sometimes. So, yeah, there we go. There's my little rant about this. But at the same time, this is going to be a fun project. I'm really looking forward to it. We, we even have these really old Crawlmaster motors. Um, originally, these were made by the Scorpion factory, and these are Outrunners. We don't have a Crawlmaster Outrunner anymore. But I really wanted to take that Crawlmaster name, and I didn't have anything else to put it on. So I threw it on these motors at the time. And to tell you how old these are, uh, Crawlmaster 3014, 850 kV. Pretty good for this, but 850 kV is not what we would use these days. If I was going to do a more modern build, 1400 kV, I think. Well, especially with the smaller tires. With the smaller tires, we definitely want a higher kV. I would probably bump like a 1800 kv on this thing if i was going to do modern motors which maybe i'll do but at the same time these motors are already bolted in they're meshed up well with like eight two eight tooth pinions yeah we got eight oh no wait one two i got a six tooth pinion in this thing i think jeez it's gonna be slow 
cool. Well, that's what we'll do. Put some modern ESCs on this and just see how it goes. So yeah, fun project. Just wanted to share with y'all. So if you got any questions about it, leave your comments down below. We'll do our best to get to them. As always, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Today we're gonna call, call, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna call. Call your mom, call your mom.